Well, look who's uh, sitting with you right now because, uh, you know, it was about 15 years ago in a media stunt. I tried out for <clears throat> Dog's team. I did not make it that day. I, I'm not holding That's hard not to make that I, team. I, I did not deserve to make that team. No, it was, yeah, it was hard, but I was pretty awful. Uh, Terry Kennedy sitting down with us here on 97.3 The Fan. TK, it's good to see you, and uh, you're looking well. Yeah, yeah. You know, you guys are talking about that travel. That's why I retired. I'd get a million Marriott points a year and 100,000 airline miles, and that's the only good thing that came out of it. <laughs> well, I'm sure you got some stories. Yeah. <laughs> after a while, the travel. After a while, the travel just not worth it. It wears you out, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, you see, you know, you see boat. You see boats back at it uh, for the Texas Rangers, and he's gonna he's gonna do it all again. He's yeah. gonna do it all again. If Those are charters, though. Yeah. <laughs> That's a little different. I mean, you know, people in the airports are so mean and so, they are. so miserable now. It's well, not, it's so hard to travel these days. It's not like it yeah. used to be. Yeah, it's brutal. It's not <laughs> like it used to be. Well, man, you had a you had a great career. It's fun seeing you out here. What have been your impressions so far of uh, of camp? You know, I always enjoy this. I meet the most interesting people. You know, they do different things in life. I, I'm exposed to different people's. Uh, you know, jobs and stuff. I learn about them, and the guys are always so upbeat, um, even even though they're in pain uh, after the first day. Um, you know, they, it's just great. I get excited. You saw me in the game yesterday. Yeah, I, I was pumped up about my guys. And, and well, your uh, boys. I don't know what happened, but every ball they hit was in the gap. You guys yeah. were barreling balls. Uh, yeah. We got Betty, our ass. We lost to Terry Kennedy's team yesterday. We did. Yeah. That's good defense too. Yeah, and my guys- man is sick. Who? Ming Tom. Oh, yeah. He's, he's out. He, oh, he's out. He's sick. Oh, shoot. I wish I was that kind of And, you know, we all ate at the same restaurant last night. I'm not looking forward <laughs> to the next two hours. I don't know what's Where'd going on. Where'd you guys on. go? <laughs> don't had, say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. <laughs> no, we had some Korean barbecue. It was very good. And uh, uh, Tom uh, and the Harry Nam um, ordered for all of us. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> he's the expert on that, and it was awesome. Really good. That's amazing. <clears throat> Talking to uh, Terry Kennedy out of Padres Fantasy Camp. Woodsy just mentioned Boach. Now he's your backup back in the uh, in the mid '80s on the San Diego Padres. Did you uh, did you know that that guy would someday become a, a likely Hall of Fame manager? I did not. I mean, I knew he was an intelligent guy and everything, and and smart and perceptive about the game, but I didn't realize that uh, you know that's what he wanted to do. And and uh, you know, after I, I just followed him after that, and uh, he's, he's great, man. The players. And I talk to players that have had him and coaches that have worked with them, and there's nothing but good. You uh, you had a long career in the big leagues. Fourteen years is a is a is a long career, man. Something to be very proud of. Um, how has the game? What are like? Obviously, you know, players are bigger, stronger, faster. They throw harder. Um, how has the game changed in your eyes when you view it? You know, the way you used to. Are you? Are you? Do you lament the way that it uh, used to be played, or do you do you look at it now and go, "Man, this is this is some really exciting stuff"? Well, theory has changed. I mean, speed was a much bigger part of the game with all the astroturf. Um, but to say that these guys are stronger overall, I mean, like the infielders are stronger than the infielders. But sure, you know, Steve Carlton and Dave Kingman, uh, Dave Parker, they're pretty strong. Big boys. <laughs> and uh, Dave Parker used to smoke cigarettes in the dugout, though. Come on, I mean, that would never happen in 2023. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, you can't. Uh, yeah, my temple. I can't ruin my temple. You know? <laughs> That's exactly right. <laughs> um, I think there was more looking out than looking inward when I played. Uh, but you know, theory has changed. And you know, after I became a major league scout with the Cubs in the last eight years, and and I started to understand and appreciate some of the uh, numbers involved in how you can rate a player because it really helped me. I don't like all of them. I sure. Think, I think you get too much, and you know, players got to be careful of what they take in. They got to filter it, or or they're just going to get overwhelmed by all the stuff. But That's I, a, it's a g- good point, and we talk about it all the time. We're talking to Terry Kennedy here on Ben Woods this morning. You know, you'll you'll have the one hundred percent. Old school, I don't like this new fangled <laughs> baseball. I go with my gut. And then you have the – there's a new generation, seemingly there's some fans that are like, well, you know, statistically and all the numbers, the combo, the, the teams that are able to combine both, you know, the, the Astros, teams like that, you look at and they go, man, those guys are analytics heavy. And they Dusty Baker, though, he's a gut, he's a gut guy. So, you know, you combine them and look what you got. You got a world champion. You can't throw out the human element. 
and you can't throw out the other one either. Right. Um, but the ones that are most successful, you're right. They meld it. I think the Padres are there. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, I don't know, you know, uh, what's really great is one of the most impressive things the Cubs did and, and other clubs are doing these pitch labs. They have, they have cameras that have 3,500 frames a second. Yeah. And, you know, they can tweak a guy's breaking ball. You know, they look at the spin rate and they look at his arm angle because it's so slow. They can see where his hand in. They say, okay, if you do this, this, and this, now throw it. And all of a sudden their spin rate's better. The break is better. And that's fascinating. That's awesome. It you is. Know? It's cool. I wish, you know, I wish you could do that. I think hitting is harder to, I, th- I still think hitting is the hardest thing to do. So I think that's harder to, to fix a guy like that because that twitch is personal. Some guys have more than others. Yeah. Hand eye is personal. You can improve that a little bit, but um, I mean, uh, but they're working on it. And you know, guys, uh, you know, the, I like the way they take apart hitters. Hey, look, you're you're uh, swinging at the first pitch. You're hitting 190. Yeah. You know, you got you got to have more patience. You know, they, they got the numbers to to back up. They know what what a guy hits on one one. What a guy hits on two one and and one and two. So you know they they can help a hitter that way. Where a hitter may not even go there in his mind. No, I want to ask you too about the the catching position because it is. Uh, it's such a fascinating position, and if you've ever caught, and you certainly have, the game at the big league level has got to be almost overwhelming for a young catcher. I mean, it's got to be – there's just so much to think about. Um, you know, you you got to hold a guy close. you got to make sure you're calling the game the right way, and you got to contribute offensively, and especially these days. I mean, you, you really do. I mean, it's very few defense-first catchers. Uh, these days, how hard is it for the layman to understand how fast that game is when you're behind the dish? Yeah, and you know, people always wanted to get their seats. You know, you know first two rows. Yeah, the game's too fast for the fans down there. Yeah, <laughs> you you might want, want might want to back up one section so you can see the game a little slower. But uh, you know, it was I, I really like calling the games. I think that was probably my strongest point. Um, and, you know, you had to know the other players, and then you got to know them more, and you got to know your pitcher against that player. But that's another part of the analytics is that, you know, they have these heat maps of strike zones and the heat maps of that pitcher against the hitter, and that helps a lot. At least you can you can separate a lot of the stuff before the game starts. Um, I don't know how much they call anymore. Uh, I think sometimes they, they get uh, – uh, they get in call for him. I, that would disappoint me if I was catching. But um, now, with if the automatic strike zone comes to MLB, which I think it will eventually, the irony of this thing that has taken place in the last ten years of just framing and getting strikes, that's not going to matter. They got to go back to blocking balls and <laughs> throwing people out. That's exactly right. Which they don't care about. It's exactly right. <clears throat> and uh, you know that, that's going to be interesting to see how that works. Talking with former Padre Terry mm-hmm. Kennedy this year on that seven through the fan. And uh, next year, TK will be the 40 year anniversary of the 1984 National League wow. pennant for the Padres. One of my thrills being a game five of the NLCS against the Cubs <clears> down <throat> there in Mission Valley. I mean, what are, what are some of your defining memories of that season? A young Tony Gwynn, Garvin Nettles on the corners, Tempe and Wiggins. I mean, what, what do you think about when you go back to that season with the <clears throat> Padres? Well, first of all, the thing that just jumped in my mind, one of the campers here, he goes, hey, you high-fived me. I said, what? He says, you you high-fived me after the last pitch of the, of the NLCS. I ran on the field from the, from the third base side. I said, you high-fived me. I said, you're lucky I didn't punch your lights out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that I would admit so, that. I, I mean, how, how cool is that? The guy's there, and you know, I didn't remember it, but that's that's cool anyway. But, you know, that last moment, Jody Davis hit that ground ball to Nettles. He threw the ball to, to, to uh, Wiggy at second, and I ran into Goose's arms, and Goose squeezed the hell out of me. Man, it hurt. <laughs> and then we just, you know, it was just we thought we were dead. After Chicago and those two games, oh, you know, I told my wife, I said, hey, where where you want to go Tuesday? <laughs> uh, and uh, I said, these guys, these guys are really good. And then we knew we'd win the third game. And the fourth game, of course, was was decisive. And Garve had that great game. And uh, and then we go down three to nothing on Sunday. And I thought, well, our magic has run out. And then Tony hit that ball. I said, no, it hasn't. <laughs> We're still alive. No, it hasn't. And then, you know, uh, Goose is blowing and, 
in the eighth and ninth. And I can remember, I won't name the player, but he came up in the first hitter in the eighth inning, and he turned to me and says, good luck in the series. Whoa! Wow! wow. They knew it. Wow. The 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 pottery way was too strong. And, <laughs> and Goose Gossage from 99 or whatever. He yeah, was throwing it was back great. Then. And, you know, uh, I played with Tempe in St. Louis, so I was really happy that he came over. And, and uh, Nettles taught me a lot about infield play and the little secrets that he, you know, that he knew with his experience. And and uh, and uh, Wiggy, Wiggy was more than acceptable at second. I didn't think that was going to work. And but man, what a what a year he had! And uh, of course, Tony broke out and became became Tony Gwynn. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and uh, Mac uh, McReynolds uh, broke out. Carmelo was great. You know, we had we had a nice balance. Not overwhelming power, but it was a good balance because they were they, a lot of good hitters in the lineup. <clears throat> That's awesome, man. Well, great, great stories, TK. I know you guys got meetings in there. We really appreciate you stopping by. Been fun getting to know you and, and playing against you yesterday. And look forward to a rematch. Don't know if we'll get there, but uh, I know kind of where we need to position our outers now, uh, and that's in the gaps. So <laughs> There's going to be a lot less cover- coverage today by the outfielders. <laughs> you are not kidding. Man. I don't think those hammies are going <laughs> to have much range. We appreciate you, buddy. All right, so guys. Nice, that was awesome. Terry right. Kennedy on our Thanks, Premier Chevrolet.